Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I am back for my Christmas craft along. So today we are going to be making a sweet little miniature needle book on a key ring, if you want to put it on a key ring. Um, and these I'm going to be making for the reusable Christmas bonbons that I have made. And these will be going inside as a little present for my Christmas attendees. So let's take a look at it. It's got a little cover um, and I'll come back to the materials I've used in a moment when we're starting to um, get our piece, bits and pieces together. Um, little cover, it's got pinking shear cut out around the outside. It's got one of my little uh, mother of pearl buttons. It's got a very simple little thread um, wrap tie that then allows it to open up. And inside it's got um, a felt um, bifold or yeah, bifold, two folds, one either side, and then it's got a place for a safety pin, a needle, and a pin. It's got a button, um, and you could even put some more spare buttons in if you wanted to, but the button's acting as a holder as well. Um, and then it's got a little miniature thread bobbin that I made and I've put a pale blue and a black on it. Today we'll probably put a white, uh, navy blue and maybe a black being the most color, um, common colours. It's got some stitching around there. And then in this um, side, it's got a little pocket where it can keep a coin. So this is a $1 coin. And often when you go into supermarkets these days, you need to put a coin in the trolley to use it. Not that I tend to go to supermarkets that much and our local um, sort of a smaller one doesn't require the, the coins, but you never know when you might need a coin. You might need to just buy something if your card's not working. Someone might need a hand with, um, I don't know, they might not have enough money for their bus ticket. So it's always handy to have a, have a coin with you. So that's in a little pocket um, at the back and because it's um, sort of sandwiched in with the cover, it doesn't, doesn't fall out and doesn't need a, a cover on that pocket. And then on this side, there's a little um, strip across here that just holds a, as well as a Travis um, piece of hair, uh, it also holds a little paper fold out because with um, electronic devices the, these days, we sometimes don't have paper with us, but sometimes we do want to just jot something down. So that just holds nicely in there. And if you had a receipt or something you wanted to keep, you could just um, pop that in there as well. Um, so I think I've shown you all the elements and then the covers just as it is. It's just stitched in by the spine and that that is it and then it just does up does up like that and it's got a little key ring you can buy these ones I think just came from Kmart. I've probably had them for maybe two years in my craft um, cupboard and yeah you can just stitch them on and then you've also got another place to be able to slide keys and other things on. So let's um, start to put it together. And I'll give you some approximate measurements, but you can really make it whatever, whatever size you want. Um, what I did was just cut myself out a little template of approximately um, the size that I want it to be. And I'll just um, use some of the uh, this which I got from the reverse art truck and it's a beautiful it feels like leather but I don't think it is it's got a um, soft uh, inner on it which makes it feel really lovely and so I'll just cut out a further area out from here let me just grab now I'm not sitting in my usual place where I film my videos it's a very hot night here it's been a very hot and humid day so we've got the aircon on downstairs. Alex has um, popped out to catch up for dinner with his cousins. And I am staying home with Travis and minding minding Travis. Um, I'm actually very happy to be, to be doing that. <laughs> you might think I'm a bit antisocial, but um, sometimes it's nice for the boys just to have some have some family time with their with their cousins they only they haven't actually seen each other in a, a very long time so I thought not perfect opportunity Alex go and enjoy the evening and I'll I will look after Travis at home so I've had a lovely lovely dinner of some beautiful pork schnitzel that I cooked up with some caramelized apple 
some cheesy broccoli. No, not broccoli, no cauliflower actually. I was going to do broccoli, but then the cauliflower. Now, because this has little spots on it, I'm sort of able to follow the spots. Um, but the upshot of me not being in my craft room tonight is I'm actually sitting on the couch and what you can see in front of you is my dress that I'm wearing um, today. And so I'm actually crafting on my lap, which I don't normally do. So it'll be interesting to see how I go. So I'm just going to trim down a smidgeroo. Hopefully we're about straight. Let's compare that for size. Wow, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty good indeed but yeah just make yourself a, um, a template if you want if you particularly if you're going to make a bunch of them and you want them all to be the the same size um, and I'll just give you some measurements on this approximately including the little um, so it's about 10 centimeters in length and about six just probably six and a little bit six and a half let's say um, being a bit generous in terms of its width and then it will be folded folded in half now I have pre-cut out my bits of felt but again I just made myself some um, templates so I've got a bit of felt that will go in the middle and you just want to make it a little bit smaller um, than your cover so that when you fold it it actually looks all right and then I've got myself my little strap that will go across um, the front here. And I've got my pocket that will go across the back. Now when I made this one, I first of all did the stitches in the middle and then I put in place this and then I put in place um, this bit. But I'm thinking I can probably make it a bit easier for myself and put this one in place first. Um, and then also stitch this onto it before it goes on. So I might start with this one. And let's just make sure that it's not too long. It might just need a tiny bit of trimming. Well, I can probably trim it at the end. I just need to make sure it is at the halfway, halfway mark. I might just trim a tiny bit off like that okay and then I've been using this variegated anchor pearl cotton I think I just got these ones off Amazon they were a mixed mixed set when I was in my particularly infatuated with um, pearl a variegated cottons Use a nice big needle because it just helps when you get to pushing through the, the leather or the suede or whatever that um, fabric is. Just put a knot in the end. So the benefit of being downstairs is I've actually got um, my video playing onto the TV. Although interestingly, just as I said that, it stopped mirroring onto the TV so I'm not quite sure what's going on there but that's okay so what I might do is just pop through and hide the tail in there and then I'll put a little stitch to start it off and then maybe I'll pop up so I've just put a little holding stitch in and then we can start doing our longer stitches now you could do um, these stitches however you want I just did a little running stitch essentially because it's going to just have a coin in here it doesn't need to be a fully don't need to do a back stitch for example and you can do them as small or as big as you want because I'm mass making these I'll be making a good number of them for my little um, bonbon presents so I'll probably do bigger stitches so I don't know what sort of weather you're having but yeah as I mentioned it's been so humid we don't normally get much humidity here we normally get the hot um, summer winds but it has been humid I came down this morning and Alex was already up um, and I had a little cardigan on over this um, 
dress, which is a strappy, a long um, cotton strappy dress with this beautiful um, broidery anglais on it. Um, and I had a little cardigan over the top. Uh, and Alex said, no, you definitely won't need the cardigan for going for your walk with Travis this morning. And it was already steamy at 7.30 in the morning. It was warm indeed. So Travis is flaked out on the floor. I thought he might come and come and craft with me, but nope, he's flaked out in the corridor with the air conditioner venting down on him, um, and he is happily happily resting. He does not like the he does not like the heat. Travis being a black a black Labrador. If you saw last night's video, you would have got a little um, glimpse of Travis at the end. He was watching me with my icicles and, and snowflakes. Probably done those actually a little bit too spacey out. I might just fix that up. I was watching Rachel with her Christmas video just before, um, making her star star wreath. Um, and yeah, just reflecting on sometimes when we're making videos, things just don't don't go to plan, do they? Uh, but it's just you you go with the you roll with the punches, you share your insights as you go, and you keep going. So I think people appreciate that. I mean, there must be people that come to YouTube just wanting to find a video that just yeah shows it getting done and that's all maybe edited down so there's nothing nothing that um yeah that doesn't work but I think part of what I like to share like Rachel and Sarah do is you you share your experiments it's not all polished before you turn the camera on you're turning the camera on, on as you craft and as you create so yeah absolutely good on good on Sarah and Rachel for everything they do it's just just amazing so that will then become our little back pocket so I can probably now put the little folds the stitches in for the fold down the middle while we're while we've got some thread in there so I'll just sort of position it where I want it to be that'll be fine like that Probably another another stitch in now let me just check where the center will be on this I might even use my friction marker which will erase with some heat unless I can get a good fold mark to just show there I think that's almost that's pretty good but I might just oh it's virtually here but I'll just put a little just put a little mark maybe there just so I know it's there and it's virtually down here okay and those those little marks will erase with heat and then I'll line this up so it's somewhat like this And then I will pop my needle out so it's in line with that little that little line. Oops, no, I probably should have gone across straight first before we do that. Speaking of when things don't go quite to plan. So let's try that again. I'm going to go straight across from there but pop out where the line is okay and then I might go down a bit and I think I'll then put a little stitch back to here check that that's sitting straight the way I want it to be yep and then I think you can do whatever you want before I just did a like a longer one up the middle but I think I'll just do some little oops coming from the back I'll need to come through there it's kind of good that I put my little mark in let's check that that looks like it's sitting sort of straight where we want our felt to be 
Let's just check where our middle point of our felt should be, about there. Yep, I think that's okay. Oops, catching over the corner. It's probably a little smidgy crooked. So we'll just try that again. Probably better to line it up on the back actually as we do this. So we've got those little marker points on the back. So main thing is just make sure we're not sewing our pocket um, shut, but we're not, so that's good. That's better. Actually, I might, I might do it the way I did do it before. I think it probably looks neater not to have so much um, on the on the outside spine. So I might come back over back through that hole and then lay it down like that up the middle and then pop out and let's just make sure we've got it sitting where we want it to sit and then pop out at the top near the top about there and then out about there Take it back and over I feel like <coughs> oh, excuse me, I just sneezed. I was about to say I feel like I've got a sneeze coming, but in that moment <laughs> the sneeze came. So, um, and then I think when we put this little strap over here, we can put another couple of um, little stitches in the middle, but that will definitely, um, yeah, hold it. And it kind of looks like a nice little um, book binding. I guess it makes a little decorative stitch there. So I'll stick with that. Um, then I will take my needle uh, back in, unless I want to, no, I think I'll put the little hook for it, the... I'll put this in um, at the end, I think, once I've done the other stitches because it gets a bit um, bulky once it's got the little key ring attached. So at this point, um, I will take my needle back inside and then I'll pass um, my thread. I'll just catch the outer bits of the felt but not go through the felt. So I'm just catching, sorry, you probably can't see that. I'm just catching a little bit of felt with the thread. And then we can stitch, stitch across. So what I've done with this is just um, anchored it at this end underneath where I'm going to be putting the button on. Um, and at this end, I've just anchored it at the actual spine, and that's where I'll put another another stitch in. So let's just pop, and again, let's make sure we're keeping keeping straight with straight with the spine. So we'll want to angle it. That's pretty good, I think. I could probably be a smidge over. Just do that as another little, little stitch, I think. poked myself but thankfully it's a big needle so sometimes they don't hurt as much the big needles because they're they're not as sharp so I'll just put a couple of little stitches in here to make sure this is the little strap is held held in well which I think it is now so might do one more just to be sure to be sure 
Oh, I think that's fine actually. Probably don't want it that bulky on the back. And then I'll bring my needle, um, I'll put another stitch in to get up to the center, like this. And then I'm just going to do a little um, running stitch along here and I'll do it just by passing my needle in and in and out of the felt. Like that and hopefully you get something that's semi semi neat although it's slow stitch and it's the charm is in the the not being perfectly neat all the time. And then I'm going to anchor this one through to the front. I'm probably a bit, bit back from here. And this is where we'll be putting our little button on as well. I'll just make sure my piece of paper fits, but if it doesn't, we can always trim the paper down. But this is just from a little Florentine notebook. Yep, that's a nice, nice tight fit, so it's not going to not going to um, fall out, which is good. And then I'm going to grab my jar of beautiful vintage Mother of Pearl buttons and pick out a particularly nice button. Some of them are wonderful. Look at this one. It's got quite a curve in it and it's got beautiful, um, beautiful gleaming. Don't know if you can see it. Don't know how well it comes out on camera, but they are lovely. Front and back, they are lovely. And then we are going to stitch our button on the front, except this needle is not going to fit through. So we're going to switcheroo needles for a moment. Don't even know if this needle will fit through. Nope, that one won't fit. Let's find a needle that will fit our thread, but also fit through. Don't know if this needle will fit our thread. We might have to go a searching for one that's the perfect Goldilocks needle, as we call it. Don't know what happens to some of my needles. They seem to, maybe they disappear into the the pin cushion. I am not sure. Okay. We are threaded. We are all systems go. Okay, so we'll put our button about there, I think. I feel like I'm coming through a knot or something. I must have been coming through a prior stitch. I suppose it's also because I am using a smaller needle and yeah, it just makes it a bit harder getting through that that leathery suediness. But if you didn't have this um, type of fabric, which you probably don't um, because it has come as a sample fabric from the reverse art truck, you could equally use felt as the cover for your um, little book or some other. Um, if you've got something else that won't fray, that would be particularly good and that's where felt or these types of uh, finished fabrics are good. But yeah, you could definitely, definitely use felt. I just love this one with its little, um, almost like holographic little spots on it. It's very sweet. And I've had it sitting in my um, craft cupboard in a little hanger on the door. And um, I've been thinking, what am I going to make with it? But here we go, Christmas, perfect. So um, that should be enough stitches to hold our button, I think. So we will stitch that knot that there on the front because I don't mind a bit of visible knotting and then I'll just take it to the take it to the back as well and finish it off there might just put one more knot in given that's got to hold our button which is what we'll be holding our little little thing closed little thing little needle book closed so let's just put another knot in the back and then trim it off nice and nice and close Looking for my little scissors. Rather than having my whole craft desk in front of me, I've just got two little um, bits of a cardboard box <laughs> to keep all my bits and bobs in. But that's okay. It's making me be compact. So that is that side done. That's our pocket done. 
so I think we're going pretty well. We still need to attach our key ring on and we also need to um, put our little piece of string on to wrap around when our when we're closing our needle book. So I might go back to my nice bigger needle, my javelin or sword. What did you call it, Linda? Was it a javelin or was it a sword? <laughs> javelin, I think. Can't remember. You did make me laugh though. So I feel like we're a bit colour coordinating today with our little project and my, my dress. I promise it wasn't planned. Um, okay, which will we do first? I think we'll do our little um, piece to wrap around the button and hold our needle book closed. So I've got my little knot there. And what I'm then going to do is just put some little stitches in to hold this piece in place and again I don't mind having the knot visible you could again hide it under a button if you were fussed about having a knot visible but for me that's just part of the detailing on this little little craft and you wouldn't even have to do a knot you could just actually through the process of stitching um, do it, but as I say, it's just a, for me, it's part of the features. Oops, probably trying to go too much through the knot. And then we'll just do another little passing it through and knotting it again, I think. Which is quite nice, you get a nice little, little surface. Feature. I might put make a second knot because then it'll be about the same size as the first one. There we go. That's nice. Nice little feature there. And so then I will test how it goes when we close it. Perfect. I like to leave plenty of string. You can put a knot in if your um, thread's going to uh, be sort of fray at the end this thread doesn't tend to do that but I can yeah definitely put a knot in at the end so, put, left plenty of thread there probably don't need quite that much let's then sew on our little key ring so do we think that's probably that should be enough I think to do that step so again make a knot Pull the knot nice and tight, trim off the endy bit of the knot, and now you'll have to remind me at the end to show you the advent calendar if you're keen to watch it, or obviously you can move along if it's not advent when you're watching this video and you don't want to see my vintage advent calendar, but I've got it next to me, so hopefully I remember. So maybe I'll pop through from the back first of all. Or actually, no, I'll pop through from here so that we don't have the knot showing on the back and it will just pop out where we've already got a stitch in place, which will be handy. And then I'm just going to stitch it onto this little bit here. And it will just try and move around a bit as we start off because it's not really anchored at this particular junction in time. just came over there whereas I didn't want to actually do that so let's try that again so I'm going to go up first and then I'm going to try and get this one to just stitch into here so I'll take my needle through once and then I will back out at the back and then pop back in through that hole so each time I am coming through my little loop and just repeating stitches where I already have my hole do a couple more and then we'll just have a look how that looks oops just came through my th 
thread then. So that's pretty good. That's sitting nicely, nicely secreted there. Well, not secreted, but just nicely on the on the edge. So I'll just put in a few more anchoring stitches because this is going to have to endure being on a, a key ring and might get a bit of pummeling. So I'll probably put a decent amount of stitchery in place. And I'll probably just go down a bit further so it's not all trying to hold through the one or two same holes. Go down even a bit further again. I might just come up part way. Okay, and then let's just attach it also just to the edge of our felt. A few stitches through it. Oops, try not to catch the cover. And then I'll actually just put some little knotting stitches as well. Pass my needle through that to make another knot and I'll do that again. There we go. So I think that should be pretty secure. Like that. And then we can put our little goodies inside. Oh, and we've also got to make our little um, windy thing. So let me grab some of my got a small piece of that black card not my template piece there we go all right that's attached to my bigger piece so i think we'll just take a, a piece of our, our bigger sheet that's okay these were just the ones that i also got at the um, reverse art truck i just realized i haven't brought down my paper scissors so i'm going to use my little thread snips which i'm sure is against all the rules such is, such is life. Okay, let's use this as a little semi-template. Where can I do that where I won't have gold? That'd be about right. And it might be easier to cut across from here. Okay. And then we just make our little bobbin bobbin shape. Funny, um, crafting downstairs. I used to get in so much trouble when I'd lose <laughs> lose needles on the couch. <laughs> well, not really trouble, but Alex would always go, "You haven't lost another needle, have you?" Because I'd just be surreptitiously kind of looking around. <laughs> so naughty. But that's definitely where the craft room is good because I usually find them under. If a needle's gone missing, I usually find it under under my desk, under my craft desk. Okay, putting the needle back in the. Um, back in the pin cushion and then let's put that one back in its little um, spot oh that's the other thing I've got to do so I've got to do my little holder I knew there was something else missing so let's do that and again these are sort of just optional ideas you might have your own way you want to construct your needle book you might want more pages um, I guess it might just get a bit bit bulky if you went too many more pages and so inside I'm just using a regular little plastic one that actually came in the little sewing kit that I got in my um, nature strip find recently for the last thrifty Thursday. So I've been making good use 
I think even these pins might have been in there. I'm not sure. can't remember. There was definitely some pins. But yeah, these little buttons and the safety pins and the needles um, that I'll be putting in this all came from that little stash. So what I'm going to do is pop my little knot inside the pocket and I'll just pop out about halfway, about halfway along. About there, I think, or maybe a bit further along. Maybe a bit more, a bit more like that, perhaps. Oops, I've got my thread hanging around. There we go. All happens. It all happens. And then I'll just put a little stitch in up the top. And put my... Where has my other little kit gone? There it is. So yeah, just um, put the need uh, the button on just so that it's sort of hanging loose on this thread. Well, not loose, but just stitched through by two points. I was just checking what it was that I did. Do you do that when you craft? Sometimes you're just in the zone and you have to look back afterwards and go, oh, is that what I did? There you go. It's like when I'm cooking. I find it hard to hard to um, recall what I've done exactly or if I'm trying to write a recipe it's just a lot of what I do is intuitive it's just how I roll that's how all these crafts come about I'm not um, I haven't seen anyone else do this I mean I've seen people do needle books I haven't seen a needle book on a key ring before and it just so happened that yeah I just had the materials and then just played around really and when I was doing that one last night that I was showing you before, I was just kind of yeah, adding bits as I went. And that's why today I was just thinking, oh, what order makes sense to do it? Because last night I just did it in the order that it kind of intuitively happened. There we go. That's pretty good, I think. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably put in a cross stitch as well. I don't know if that's a good idea to just help hold. We can do that. So if I'm going to do that, I might pop my needle. I'll just pop my little pocket so that it's open. And so then I can pass my needle through. Hopefully not um, hit my, hopefully not hit my hand. Pop it out here maybe. So the thread sort of just lies along there. And then I will take it along to here and pop it out about... And then I'll come across and put another little stitch in. Oops, and we're caught up with our wrapping, <laughs> wrapping thread. It's all happening, I tell you, all happening. And then pass the needle through that way. It's going to be like a little present. Wouldn't that be a nice way to wrap a present with um, some thread through a large button? That could be a fun wrapping. I tend to do just my little hampers and things these days, so I don't have that many presents to wrap. Travis gets some wrapped presents, but not putting buttons on his because I'm sure he would eat them. We actually, I was actually down crafty while I was um, letting my biscotti cook on the weekend, and I was working on the little beaded pieces for the baubles, the decoupage um, baubles that I shared in another video. And then later that day, Alex said, oh, did you spill your um, beads, your letter beads on the floor? And I said, no, I didn't do that. And he goes, what's this on the couch? And he was picking up bead after bead. And I remember there was a moment there where um, Travis had been watching me beading. Sorry, I've just done, done my needle. So Travis, the Labrador pup, um, for those that watch this, <laughs> this uh, channel often, you'll know love, uh, Travis. Terrible Travis. No, no, he's really not. Um, and he'd been watching me intently and I'd actually just given him, given him a little bit of biscotti. So he was quite interested in that. And then I sat down and did some beading and I think in his mind, he thought, oh, they must be delicious like the biscotti. Um, and so when I left, he obviously came over to the bead container, which I just left on the couch because he's pretty good these days. And he obviously picked up a mouthful of them, worked out that they weren't edible and then just spat, spat them on the ground. 
around and spat them onto the couch. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because it, it, it's funny. It is actually funny. Um, so, yeah, we worked out that's what happened. And he was a little bit sheepish, which um, he tends to kind of be when he knows that, yeah, he's probably done something done something a little bit untoward. He's a funny boy, our boy. He really is. Makes us laugh, which, yeah, that's, you can't, you can't do without laughter. Worth every cent. Okay. So, there we go. Um, so, for our little thready windy things, which let's hope that, that will fit in and sit nicely now. Yep, I think that, that will be great. That will even hold it even better. I might have to go back on my other one and do that because it'll just give it a nice holding. So, to do these, I won't show you all the winding. Um, I'll just show you what I do, which is to put a little snip in either end. In fact, we might just do a black and white onto this, I think. Because they are the most common colours that people need if doing a bit of mending. So we just pop, start off by popping our end through. And then, yeah, it's as simple as not um, catching on it, but just putting a nice amount of cotton just a fun little idea, a miniature of everything. Obviously, if you had little needle threaders spare, you could put those on as well. I need to get some of those cute little novelty ones that are lovely. Annie Claxton from Artie Fatty. Annie had as part of her little whatnot kits. I should have got myself a whatnot, but I had so many projects at the time, and they I think they went like hotcakes. So Annie, you might have to do another another fun kit. I know you're the same as me. You've got so many projects on the go. But do check out the lovely arty farty Annie. Very good YouTube buddy. She does so many different crafts. She is amazing. And art as well. Although I do contend that our slow stitching projects are their art as well. So once you're done, you just um, yeah put it through the little nib and that holds it in place. And we'll do our... A black thread. Again, you could go fun colours to coordinate with your kit. These are very utilitarian colours. Hopefully it's not getting too dark. It's starting to darken up outside now. done and then we'll call it done on our little sewing kit I think unless I notice that anything else is missing in action we do need to put our little needle and um, pins in as well actually and then we'll have a look at the advent calendar if you're wanting to stick around for that so we'll slip this in here so yes I did put that little one there in there great actually there's even those little nibby bits almost nib onto the um, nib onto the thread and so then let's grab ourselves a I'll go blue to coordinate little blue pin I should put the pin in the inside so it's not close to the edge and then a safety pin on the outside So you're just putting it through the felt, so the felt's, felt's great for that. This is just an old felt I have. I think this might have been Nana's felts, actually. This was definitely a little needle um, set that I picked up from the, the collection I got off the curbside the other day. I don't think they're rusted or anything. No, nope, they look in pretty good, good nick, pretty unused. Again, just slip that through, and this is where you could put more needles in if you wanted to. I'll just make it a little bit, just so it's easy to get out, and that will just stay nice and nice and safe in there. You don't have any sharp um, bits pointing out. Um, we'll need to put a coin in. 
Alex's mum has a funny tradition that when you give her something sharp, she has to give you a coin back. So at least this will mean because I'm giving her something sharp. I don't know if I'll have to put two coins in. I'll have to ask um, Alex about the tradition. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to put in three so she actually has a coin at the end of it. Sorry, my um, phone was just telling me it's running low on batteries, but that's okay. So there we go, that is a little gorgeous um, handheld key ring uh, needlebook. So thanks for watching that and let's have a look at the advent calendar. And if you're not interested in that, feel free to mosey along and I hope you have a, yeah, a lovely evening or a lovely day. But for those of us having a look at our advent calendar, we are up to day 13. So let's have a look in the pocket. <gasps> I'd forgotten about these actually. These are the most beautiful little blown glass um, buttons. So they've actually got a little tiny, the most fragile little blown glass loop on the top of them. Sorry, just trying to get down into the right bit. And they are just pearlescent and delicious. I actually had planned to add some to my Roxy Journal of Stitchery treasure hunt piece, um, but I think they're hiding away in a tin somewhere, but I probably won't add them till the end because they could be prone to getting damaged. And that one I might even, I think it'll be okay actually here. I just hope it won't clink clank against any. No, I think I'll pop it back inside just to keep it extra safe. So number 13 has come out and it's going back, back in for a little rest. So there we go. That is um, the advent calendar. So thank you so much for watching and take care and I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully for another craft. Thanks everyone. Bye.